Over seven grueling days. Over 70 hours of play. Over 7,000 competitors vanquished. These nine have endured. Winning the main event is like the, the pinnacle of any poker player's career. It feels like, it feels surreal to me. It's a dream come true. Tonight, the 2018 World Series of Poker main event final table begins. The last stage of a seemingly endless poker journey. Manion's jumping right in with pocket aces now. Labat with kings. And Are you oh, kidding me? Sue with kings? Oh. He's on! about to become the chip leader going into the final table. The trio of spades, and that will do it. And we have our class of 2018 World Series of Poker Final Nine in a most remarkable way. And for Joe Cata, a chance to walk the same road again to a world championship title. I've been doing this my whole life. I'm just very fortunate to be in this situation. There is nothing easy about winning the main event bracelet and millions of dollars. Tonight, nine players start their own mini journey at the final table. Glory awaits. Doesn't get more exciting than right now, that's for sure. Every all in your heart. Like, doof, doof. The moment has come. Nine players with a chance to win $8.8 .8 million in the championship bracelet. There are lots of stories to follow at this final table, but the most intriguing one might just be Joe Cata going for main event bracelet number two. I've done plenty of things twice. Big deal. Michael Dyer, balloon sweatshirt intact, heads into the Amazon room second in chips. There's my favorite story, balloons on the backdrop of a light blue sky. There is the man everyone's chasing, first timer Nick Mannion. Slowly. Hey, mom and dad. Muskegon. I love Muskegon. Pro Tony Miles was 10th with 10 left, but is now third with nine left. Must be the keto diet. Hi everyone, Lon McCarran with Norman Chad and Joe Stapleton bringing you what is sure to be a fantastic final table. Chip counts reveal a stark difference between the haves and have nots. Mannion and Dyer over 100 million, the others with an average stack over low. The short stack Antoine Labatt with just 13 bigs. He was part of that aces, kings, kings hand that brought us to the final table. Now one table sit and go with millions to hand out. Hey, you want to go to the sports book this morning? Oh, they see the, the odds? Yeah. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Was that ridiculous? I don't know if you saw who the favorite was. Who's the, the favorite? The chip leaders, obviously. You, no. My, my friend bent right? me down she's, she's, to the favorite. Uh, the blinds at 300, 600,000. 2.1 million in the middle before a card is dealt each hand. There is Joe Cata. Antoine Labatt. Labat trying to become France's first main event champion. Artem Medaletti trying to become Ukraine's first main event champion. Labat suddenly the super short stack after that last hand of 10 handed play to John Sin now third and chips. I sure hope that Sin's lucky sweatshirt because that's the only reason I can think of to wear it as many <laughs> days in a row as he has. He's 11th of 2016. Look at him now, a raise to 1.3 million. Round two, Tony Miles. Ace six suited. What a story Tony Miles is, a recovering addict, now with a second chance and an opportunity to become world champion. Utah born, Florida resident. Now he is a threat with that stack, but he'll fold. And now Nick Mannion on the button, the chip leader with pocket sevens. Mannion, the oldest at this final table at 35, right next to him. Aram Zobium, the youngest at 23. Mannion makes the call, and now there is Zobian. He and Metalidi were the short stack favorites to go out 10th, but that became Rich Zoo's job. Everyone here in their 20s and 30s, with the exception of Lon and me. <laughs> Michael Dyer, the monster chip leader, folds. So Sin and Mannion will see this flop. Stapes is under 40, right? Yeah, oh yeah. What's his rush to take my job? <laughs> Mannion's pocket pair is still good. Adds a gut shot to it. This is the eighth day of play with each day in excess of 12 hours. So that seemingly favors the younger set, but I still think we'll have a champion over the age of 50 again. Sin looks like he wants to put together a continuation bet. Those yellows are worth one million each. He does bet 1.4 million. It's a good flop for Mannion. Pop it. Actually, I expect fairly tight play here at the outside of the final table, so Mr. Scaredy Cat probably will just call. 
all undercards to his pair. He just calls. Pots build quickly at this stage of the event. Another three on the turn. Sin now checks. The ex-postal carrier and ex-poker dealer now has an opening to bet and take it, but he doesn't want it. River card. Oh, my. Sin got a free look and scores the river 10 to overcome Mannion's sevens. Johnson has mentioned that he's been running as good as he ever has, and it continues here. And Sin now reaching for chips. 7.2 million in the middle. He bets almost 4 million. Mannion quickly calls. Mannion's not going to like it, and he's going to be mad at himself. John Sin perhaps beginning another unbeaten streak. When he's in a hand, he usually wins the hand. So the man of no fixed address has found a home at this main event. Oh, that was terrible. I mean, what do you show? I had sevens. This main event final table has a number of great storylines, and I don't mean Arm Zobian's shirt or Artem Metalidi's scarf, whose sartorial choices don't hold a candle to John Hess's jacket. Nope, the headline is clearly Joe Cata and the possibility of a second main event title. Norman, can you put this accomplishment into perspective? Lon, I am dripping with perspective. Nine years ago, the, the great Norman Chad said this about Joe Cata. He's a kid with a dream come true, 21 years, 11 months, 21 days old. Some Somehow he is now a 30-something kid with a dream of an improbable second main event title. Yes, others have multiple main event titles. Johnny Moss, Doyle Brunson, Johnny Chan, and Stu Unger, who won his third in 1997. But this is different. In 2009, Cata won in a field of 64-94. This year it's a field of 78-74. That's two Woodstocks. I did the math on the probability of Joe winning both main events. No, no, you didn't do that. Okay, I have no idea how to calculate that, but putting a man on the moon was less of a long shot. And now it's time to see how this all unfolds. You see the movie Dodgeball? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's like, right. Let's take a million and go bet on yourself. Michael Dyer in middle position. He was active on the final table bubble, but could have turned it up a notch, but I'm just a TV announcer. 10-9. <laughs> Raised to 1.2 million. Joe Cata, the 09 champ, looking down at Queen Jack of Spades. This main event has been a study and grinding his way through to the final table for Joe. And he calls. Labatt. Folds the weak ace. Stacks from almost zero to hero, but everyone's got a chance. You brought Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> now Alex Linsky in the big blind 8-6 of clubs. The 8-6 suited a terrific big blind hand. My seventh favorite. If you want to find out the six best big blind hands, you'll have to enroll in the Norman Chet School of Poker. Three will see this flop. Linsky with the only flop pair, but Tata still favored with its flush draw and overs. It's checked to Michael Dyer now. 13.25. Dyer, one of the first people ever to adapt the strategy of raise pre-flop, bet, bet, bet. He did it in preschool and won an extra animal cracker, and it changed his life forever. <laughs> Dyer with a continuation bet. Kata with a continuation call. Linsky now. He has the best of it at the moment, the pair of eights. But Alex will fold, and that's good news for Cata. Yeah, you know, the worst hand bets, the best hand folds. Very similar to the uh, Louisiana Purchase negotiations in 1803. Third guard now, four of diamonds. Joe Cata with queen high is best, thanks to Linsky's exit from the hand. Dyer checks. Surprised he checked, but uh, I guess he's got to give Cata credit for something for calling the flop with another player behind him. Joe Cata puts together 3.2 million. Cata just with queen high and a draw. Dyer with 10 high, no draw, and no hope. Dyer's a smart cookie, knows when to get out of the way. So a good early pot for Joe Cata, who was witness to one of the wildest hands in poker history. In. All in. 
When all the pre-flop raising and re-raising was done on the final table oh bubble, God. Nick Mannion and his aces had Rich Sue and Antoine Labatt drawing virtually dead, each with pocket kings. No one could ever remember seeing a hand like this at such a critical time. Wow, what a dream spot. With that pot, Nick Mannion was the chip leader. Everyone other than maybe the U.S. Treasury Department has weighed in on whether Labatt should have folded his pocket kings with two all-ins in front of him. I stand by him. One million the payout for ninth, but so much, much more the deeper you go. And Labatt with kings here. Now these pocket kings I would fold. It's just too soon after the other kings. <laughs> he is the short stack on the button. Just the blinds to act after him. And he raises to 1.2 million. No shove. And Queens for Metaliti. Metaliti was going to be a computer scientist and uh, naturally detoured into poker. Metaliti, the second short stack, also in desperate need of a double up, and he does shove. John Senna, the big blind, ace deuce into the muck and back to Labatt. He happily calls, finally looking for some good from Pocket Kings. Labatt still feeling the sting of those day seven kings, but this time these kings feel like royalty. And Metaliti here in the process of getting cooler for most of his stack. Labatt at risk, but in great shape. <laughs> Metaliti with over 60% of his chips at risk with just queens. All right, so here we go. Kings against the queens. Oh! Flop! Labatt is stung again! Antoine Labatt should never play pocket kings the rest of his natural <laughs> life. Oh my goodness. Now Labatt needs another king. Turn card nine of spades. Spades are not an issue here. Metalidi looking for the knockout. Labatt down to his last chance. Labatt needs a king or he is gone. The river card, another ace, and Antoine Labatt is done. Queens full for Metalidi to eliminate the hard luck Frenchman Antoine Labatt. It's too cruel for words. Labatt loses most of his stack on the final table bubble with pocket kings against aces, now loses the rest at the final table with pocket kings against queens. Ninth place for Labatt. Metaliti now into seventh place, and we are down to our final eight players. One thing is clear, poker was not the sport of kings for Antoine Labatt. Welcome back to Las Vegas. The final table of nine is now down to eight. Pocket kings come crashing down for Antoine Labatt yet again. Meanwhile, the 9 champ, Joe Cata, progressing nicely. Seems fair to say that of the remaining players, he's the most calm given his prior experience. Those four legends are Hall of Famers you see on that list. But as we mentioned earlier, Joe Cata is dealing with a different animal here. I mean, Johnny Moss, who are we kidding? He essentially won three sit and goes. And the first one wasn't even a tournament. They played for a while and they voted him the best. Heck, I'm so popular with my peers, I could have won that year. Action folded two cat and the big blind with a defendable hand. Metaliti open, raised under the gun with pocket nines. Jack 10's a worthwhile hand to defend in the big blind, but let's not forget the big blind defense epidemic that's sweeping the globe. Something's got to be done. And when this final table ends, I'll be traveling all over the world, watching people in the big blind, making sure they don't defend too widely. Kata, with his defense, flops top pair and takes the lead. Well, he shouldn't have checked. He should have donkey bet there, man. The donkey or a donk bet is a post-flop bet in which a player out of position leads into the pre-flop aggressor. The pros say no. I say why not. Kata checks, and Metaliti does put chips into the middle. 1.2 million. Metaliti likes to cook. Ukrainian food rocks. I like a good borscht with some babka or a nice banoush or some akroska soup in the summer. Kata just calls with top pair. Kata with over twice the stack as Metaliti. Turn card, eight of diamonds, giving both straight draws. All right, let's go with a delayed donk bet now. Mm, no, he does not. Come on, play ball. Kata needs a nine for a straight. Metaliti is open-ended, and he checks back. No straights after the river card. Kata's pair of tens is best. When Kata won in 09, they had the November nine, and he got three months off before the final table. This year, Joe got 16 hours off before the final table. 
Cata now bets $3.2 million. Metaliti with the pocket nines. Well, this bet represents more than 20% of Metaliti's stack. If he calls here, he'll be down to under 20 bigs. He does call. And with that, Joe Cata makes a stronger case for main event bracelet number two. Cata was all in on day seven with ace six against Frederick Brinks, ace 10. He survived that, and here he is. Joe Cata and his rail making some noise here. His girlfriend, Erica Zacholsky, enjoying this final table ride. I wouldn't have minded, I wouldn't have minded a sweat on the fly. One of them's gonna get hurt. Just a, just yeah, I just want to see blood. Yeah. You know, I, I thought for blood. sure four hearts were coming, dude. I thought for sure four hearts were coming. There's blood between one of us, for sure. McManion has the action no longer. The chip leader, Dyer, has reclaimed that with ace-queen. A raise to a million five. There is Dyer with ace-king. 32-year-old from Houston trying to put the Texas back in No Limit Texas Hold'em World Championship. He's made it look easy. As he said the other day after taking down a pot, run good, play good, win. Well, stack one and stack two have committed chips. A three bet from Dyer to 3 million seven twenty-five. dollars Yeah. Fold, 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 back around to Mannion. Ace-queen facing a three bet is not a comfortable spot, but Dyer has been aggressive with all sorts of hands, so Mannion might even be ahead in this spot. Well, Mannion does call for 2 million, 225 more, but he is dominated, as you mentioned, Norman. Here's the flop, and both see a whole lot of nothing out there. How about a donkey bluff from Mannion here? See, the donk bet sets up the donk bluff. Yeah, you're right about that, actually. They say I don't know No Limit Hold'em, but they say a lot of things. <laughs> Mannion checked, dire bets. Lon, tell the people some of the things I know. Lon? Lon? Divorce attorneys? Okay. <laughs> Mannion comes along with his two overcards. Yeah, Mannion's gonna be sticky here. Turn card now. King of clubs, top pair for Michael Dyer. That king does give Mannion a Broadway draw. See, if you donk bluff the flop, the hand might be over. Now Mannion's gonna lose for sure. Checks it again to Dyer. Dyer with a little smaller bet here, 4,350. Yeah, with the smaller bet, Mannion still not getting the pot odds to continue with his straight draw. But man, it looks like he's gonna be sticky. Sticky is in trouble. River card now. Eight of diamonds, so Mannion comes up empty. And he checks it again. Dyer very comfortable now, like me on my Barca lounger on a Saturday afternoon in 1987 watching the Pro Bowlers Tour. Dyer trying to get some value now, just over one quarter of the pot. Again, a bet crying for a call. Mannion can only beat a bluff. Mannion gives him the value. Dyer shows the winner again, a costly hand for Nick Mannion. Uh, seems like Nick put Michael on a hand he could beat and never let that idea go. Kind of like my professional bowling dreams. A familiar sight, Michael Dyer winning a pot and he even had the best hand. The main event bracelet was way off in the distance seven days ago. Right now, it's a reality for the remaining eight players as they played into a champ here at the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino. 8.8 .8 million for the new champ, one and a quarter million for the next one to lose all his chips. Talked a lot about Michael Dyer on our broadcast, and with good reason, he's been virtually unstoppable, imposing his will on anyone who dares play a hand with him. The former and short-lived University of Texas student has a dominating position at this final table. Las Vegas poker dealer Tristan Sweet, a friend of Dyer, told poker journalist Matt Clark that Dyer is the most terrifying person I have ever played against. He doesn't look terrifying. Action post-flop, Dyer with top pair and the eights on board, bets a million 275 into Sin, who checked it, Sin with a gut shot. That's terrifying? <laughs> no. And Sin with a check raise to 2 million 550. Oh, the check raise, I like it. In my home game, we call the check raise the chicken rooster, because first you're too chicken to bet, then cockle doodle do and raise. 
That's worth a shot. Won't work, but it was worth a shot as Dyer with his two pair makes the call. Johnson sees the jack of hearts fall on the turn. He's now open-ended. Well, Sin kind of unfortunate there because Dyer would have seed bet with anything, so the check raise may have worked, except Dyer has a 10 in his hand. Dyer with a gut shot to go with his top pair and eights. Sin now bets two million seven. Tries another semi-bluff with his up and down straight draw now. Dyer casually throws out a call. River card, a total blank. Will John Sin fire a third time? And will it work? Stay tuned. Back to you, Lon. John Sin has the action. Will he fire again? A uh, scaredy cat. <laughs> they both check, and Dyer will take it with his two pair. John Sin quietly loses a pot. Dyer quietly stacks his winnings. No heart. Huh? No heart. I know. Come on, man. I, I think I forgot it. You would have got it through. Huh? Rinse, repeat. Michael Dyer drags another pot as he creeps toward 150 million. I mean, poker is a lot easier when you have a dynamic uh, separation from the other stack. So it's just, it's been real simple poker. I've only had to win about four, four hands that I've had to win. So it's, it's been relatively easy, like surprisingly so. My 1983 Jenga World title felt similar to me. I only had to remove four blocks to win that year. <laughs> the blinds are up, so Arm Zobian's short stack plays even shorter now. He's got the action. Ace, eight of spades. All in. And he's all in. Zobian, the Rhode Island pro in his second main event. Count. And Zobian pushing there with 13 bigs left. Dyer asked for a count. He did not say call yet. Well, it's for about 7% of his massive stack. Dyer with a pocket pair. He does make the call. Several players to act after him. That was one cause for his concern. So Zobian officially at risk. Anybody else? Tony Miles in the big blind. Queen eight. Won't play it, so it comes down to this moment for 23-year-old Arm Zobian. Good luck. Good luck. It seems like every time Dyer says good luck to his opponent, he busts him. Zobian, a slight underdog to Dyer's pocket pair. On Zobian's rail in the blue jacket, World Series circuit ring leader, Valentin Vornicu. Here's the flop. Zobian comes up short there, but still with two live cards. Zobian got a flat tire last night, so on the biggest day of his poker life, he was at a tire shop this afternoon comparing good years to Michelin's. <laughs> a little distraction never hurt, but that is no help to Zobian. Dyer's pocket six is holding up. As usual, Michael Dyer is overcome by emotion. <laughs> Eight or an ace, or Zobian is gone. The river card is an eight. Zobian gets there on the river to double through the chip leader. He's still in it. Dyer will shrug off the flesh wound. Zobian gets a jolt, and Dyer takes care of business. Boy, those chips are like oxygen to a drowning man for Zobian. Did you think it was coming? I was feeling pretty bad about the shot, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. What was the card you were hoping was gonna come? Did you have card? that wins me, man. <laughs> wins it for me. Into sixth place, Aram Zobian, one card from elimination. He finds a river rate to stay in the game. New life at the expense of Michael Dyer. All in. The first four cards didn't do anything for Aram Zobian, but the fifth one made all the difference in the world.
Ron McCarron here with Norman Chad and Joe Stapleton as the main event field remains at eight after an eight saved Zobian. Short stack Artem Medaliti found a pocket pair of fives shoved from under the gun plus one for 6.2 million. Recently doubled up Arm Zobian is in the small blind with King Queen of Diamonds. Zobian now relatively flush with chips. This would be for a quarter of his stack. All in. He re-raises all in to isolate. Dyer in the big blind. Jack seven into the muck. And so Metalitti all in. Zobian once again needing to connect with the board to win the pot. North Providence, Rhode Island versus Kiev, Ukraine. You couldn't ask for a more traditional and historic rivalry. I love the World Series of Poker. He's drawing dead. He already died. He's drawing dead. Here's the flop. Oh, a five for Meta Liddy, and his set has him in line for the double up. But a diamond draw for Zobian. Hang on. Metaliti would have preferred a paired board, but that blank is okay with him. Diamond. Diamond. Metaliti just needs to dodge a diamond on the river. Oh, Zobian Rivers the winner again. His flush sends Artem Metaliti back to Ukraine. Metaliti has played the main event the last seven years. This is his first time in the money. Tough run out for Metaliti, and that first cash in the main event will bring him a million and a quarter dollars. Arm Zobian now is the man of the hour. Zobian with a nice little rush, a double up and knockout in quick, quick fashion after Metaliti flopped a set. He was good after the turn. Diamond. Diamond. And the diamond was on the river, bringing Metaliti's main event storybook to an end. Well, now seven-handed, quite a turn of events for Zobian, who loves being in this environment. I think it's extremely exciting just to be in the Amazon room with all the different rails, all the different types of people cheering on their respective players. And the energy in the room is simply amazing and very contagious. Only 11 players from Rhode Island entered the main event, but the smallest state might get the biggest prize. Zobian raised on the button with Queen 10. Action is on Michael Dyer. He folds to Joe Cata in the big blind with a suited king. And Joe will come along for a million more. River magic twice for Zobian. First to survive, then the knockout metal Liddy. Heads up to this flop. Ace Jack Deuce, neither pair is up. Caddis King High still leads, and the club draw looks just fine for him. He checks. Zobian loves dolphins. He wants to buy a boat one day, take it out to the ocean, and swim with them. He wants to give his life a porpoise. Oh, please. <laughs> with the Broadway draw, he bets a million four. I did not see that coming. I wish it didn't come. Okay, Joe, you didn't give me the donkey bet there, but now if you check raise, man, that signals strength. Got it with the nut flush draw, just called. I'm sorry, when did this chump and a half win the main event? Third guard now. Four of spades, Cat is still ahead with high card. Neither of these guys with chips they can loosely throw away. And that is pretty much the story of Joe's entire main event. He checks again. Better hand with the better draw checks. So being the chip leader of the main event after day six bets. 5,150,000, a strong bet. Remember Zobian three bet pre-flop. He's repping that he's got an ace or a jack in his hand or a big pocket pair. But even so, Cat is drawing to the nut flush. Joe figures it's not worth it right now. Well played, Arm Zobian. Kata was drawing to the nut flush. Zobian drawn in the chips. All of North Providence, Rhode Island, beaming with pride as Arm Zobian charges up the final table leaderboard.
the best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Seven players remain at the World Series of Poker main event final table. It's Michael Dyer, the 32-year-old from Houston, and everyone else. Well, everyone else still includes Joe Cata, the 09 champ, trying to make history with a second main event title. Joe Cata in the cutoff seat. One seat before the button made a final table in the event just before earning bracelet number three at this year's World Series. Wow, how about that? And now he's at this final table. King 10 raised to 1.7 million. Linsky has been suffering through a real dry spell. He folds. Okay, Tony Miles, listen up. Everyone is watching you right now. Why not look immediately at your cards? It gives you a chance to think about your options and then watch others. <laughs> Miles with ace nine off suit. He calls for an additional 900,000. We're heads up. You start with 50,000 chips in the main event. Cata was down to 8,800 early on day two. Miles picks up top pair. Cata sees a desert in that flop. You know who used to donk bet? The Lone Ranger. Man, <laughs> he could play poker, Lon. A check to Cata. In fact, the Lone Ranger wore that mask. That was sort of a pre-hoodie, pre-shades type of table wear. 2.2 million from Kata into the continuation abyss. Kata with the C-bet. This chump and a half doesn't really understand range advantage. Miles out of the blind, more likely to hit that flop than the pre-flop razor. A call from Tony Miles. Joe looks uncomfortable because he has squad douche. Turn card, another tray. Two pair for Tony now. He checks. Squat douche is as squat douche does. What exactly does that mean? You wouldn't understand. Kata with king high and the threes on board. He bets 5.3 million this time. Kata keeps firing away like he has a big pocket pair, but unfortunately for him, Miles has a Russell Wilson jersey and top pair. A call from Miles. Joe looks uncomfortable because he has Squadouche. The river card, another nine for Tony Miles to complete his full house. Miles with the near nuts here. Only pocket threes or nine six beats him. 7.8 million. That's the exact figure I had in mind. <laughs> and Kata left with a Squadouche lump in his throat but wondering if Miles' is bluffing here would say a missed straight draw. Joe Cata didn't get to where he is by making bad reads. Tony's rail suffering with everything he does, win or lose, and this time it's win. Good fold from Cata. Tony stacking valuable chips while Joe was on the other side of that coin. The dream run continues for Tony. Maybe there's some magic back in that Seahawks jersey after all. So much emotion at this final table and so many big river cards. Arm Zobian, the beneficiary of two of them, one to stay alive and one to eliminate Artem Metalidi. For Tony Miles, it's been a remarkable journey. He was the short stack when we were 10-handed. Now third in chips, seven-handed. Seven do remain in the hunt for this world championship title. A million five to seventh place, a million eight for sixth place. Folded to the chip leader, Michael Dyer, 1.6 million. Johnson, king, queen of spades and the small blind. With Joe Cata chasing history, it's easy to overlook John Sin's achievement, 11th year in 2016, now seventh or better two years later. 33-year-old born in Illinois, he does make the call. In the big blind is Linsky, the short stack with pocket sixes. The likable 28-year-old Aussie pro, sitting on 14 bigs. The others figure that Linsky's got something based on his demeanor here. 
Still pocket sixes. All in. And he says all in for 11 million for 25. I don't know what Dyer is doing with his fingers, but he can't continue here. He can afford it, but doubtful that he will. He does fold to send. 11 million 400. 11 million 425. 11.4. 20% of Sin's stack. Queen Knight Soda. Huh? Queen Knight Soda. I don't think I can fold his hand. I have a lot better than Queen Knight suited. Linsky thrilled, Dyer folded, but now he's got to wait on Sin. Uh, I can't fold. There fold. is the call, and the man who would be the second Aussie main event king is at risk. Two really likable chops. I hope they can chop the pot somehow. <laughs> John Sin to his rail, Linsky into the arms of his supporters as he is at risk, but with the best hand right now. Joe Hashem, of course, the first Aussie to win the main event in 05. There's the flop. Linsky's still ahead. Sin picked up a gut shot, and he's still got two overcards. Battle of Rails also. Another 10, that brings three more outs to Johnson. Yeah, now if a nine hits the river, two pair on the board will counterfeit sixes and Sin will win with a king kicker to tens and nines. How brutal would that be? One card to come. Linsky looking for the double up. The river card to Jack, and Linsky falls to John Sin straight. Linsky seemed to know it was coming. The river runs through this final table. Alex Linsky min cash the 2016 main event. But his 2018 run is something to talk about for a long time. Seventh place and a million and a half bucks. Well done, Alex. Watch the biggest live events in poker throughout the year, including the World Series of Poker, World Poker Tour, Super High Roller Bowl, and more exclusively on Poker Go. Subscribe today at PokerGo.com. By the way, before we forget, we need to celebrate the French. Antoine Labat, of course, finishing ninth last year. France had two final tableists, Benjamin Pollock and Antoine Saoud, and six players in the top 100. This year, Labat made the final table, and four Frenchmen made the top 100. 136 entries from France this year, 33 cash. That's 24%. They're playing some good poker. Sacre bleu. Six-handed now. The payout is a million eight. Folded to Arm Zobian. In the small blind. Zobian, like, so the only 20 something left, the other five remaining, 30 somethings. Queen nine offsuit, he just calls. Dyer in the big blind. Six five of hearts. And yeah, no cheap rides under his watch. A raise to 2 million 150. Yeah, Dyer not with much there, but blind versus blind and the small blind limp. So Dyer says, if you show weakness, I show strength. Zobian calls for a million 350 more. So queen nine versus six five. I love short-handed play. And you know, quite often when the small blind limps and the big blind raises, the hand would be over. So Dyer naturally would raise right there. Oh, wow. Did Dyer order up this flop? He flops two pair and top pair for Zobian, which is no good. That flop brings back memories of the final hand of the 03 main event. Chris Moneymaker flopped the bottom two. Sam Farhoff flopped top pair. They got it all in, and the rest is poker history. A million 825 from Dyer with the best hand. Zobian makes the call with top pair only. Turn card, and I'm not even surprised anymore, Norman. <laughs> Dyer with a full house on the turn. <laughs> Zobian checks. Moneymaker had to wait for the river to make his full house. 
Dyer bets three million one twenty-five. Well, Dyer raised pre-flop, so it's hard to put him on a six. Zobian started this hand with more than forty big blinds. A good portion of his stack might go away unless he gets a very lucky river card. Zobian comes along. We got a pot of almost fifteen million now. River card. Oh, and that's just cruel. Zobian with his best two pair now, but it still adds up to zero. He checks again. Yeah, not the lucky river card Zobian needed. It's almost the opposite. Smorgasbord of chips from Dyer. That's almost 9.7, and an insta call from Zobian. He can kiss those chips goodbye. Zobian sending a big chunk to the chip leader. The Zobian surrenders almost half his stack. Dyer's stack is to the moon, Alice. Michael Dyer once again in the right place at the right time. This time it brings in more than 17 million new chips. So Michael Dyer is Zobian's rush killer. If you're wondering how Dyer built such a huge lead, look no further than that run out Dyer with almost half the chips in play. Joe Cata trying to write one of the biggest stories in main event history. Cata? Ace nine, he and Zobia in the short stacks with 18 million and change each. Cata with a raise to a million seven. John Sin folds his button to the small blind. Tony Miles, King Jack. Miles says he's very grateful to French pro Pierre Calamusa, who's been discussing strategy with the Florida pro every day. What is Joe Cata up to? That's a call. McManion now in the big blind. Chip leader when we started this nine-handed final table. He's got queen 10 offsuit. One of Mannion's Michigan friends put him into a satellite here that he wanted to get to the main event. He calls for 900,000 more, three to the flop. Cata ahead for the moment. Cata open the pot and pairs is ace. A great feeling, and he's a strong favorite. Miles checks. Mannion checks. No seabed from Joe. I don't understand Joe checking the flop, but he's the champ, and I'm not, so he must be right. Top pair still good for Cata. That pairs Mannion, and Miles picks up a Broadway draw. And he checks his draw. Mannion's aces versus kings versus king's hand propelled him to the chip lead, but it's been downhill ever since. Can't get anything going. Nick check second pair. Now Cata is going to charge a toll to get to the river. 3.2 million. Tony Miles folds king jack. Well, so Cata did not bet the flop, so no reason for Mannion to put him on an ace. Mannion's queens might feel like the best hand here. And Nick will stay close here, and they build a pot of over 12 million. This is Muskegon, Michigan versus Shelby Township, Michigan. Separated by an entire state. River card is the nine of hearts, and Cata River's ace is up. It has not, as you mentioned, been Nick Mannion's night so far. He checks. The way this hand is played, ace is up feels like the nuts. Cata can bet with impunity here. I might be misusing impunity here, but I think he can bet with it. What color are the impunity chips? Well, whatever he's got in his hand right there. All in. Yeah, they're all impunity chips, I guess. That's a lot of impunity. <laughs> That's more impunity than I thought he had. Nick still with a much bigger stack despite his downfall at this final table. Well, Nick's got to wonder, would Cat a bluff shove? He actually did on day seven, but right now, those pair of queens look like they can't win. And they do go into the muck. Joe Cata keeps grinding away. Well, that time Cata bet too big to get a call. Just two black queens. What? Just two black queens. No, I had one of those. No, queen. no queens. Aces. No aces. No aces. You guys are running out of guesses. Huh? What is this? What day are we going to? Nine? Can you freaking believe it? Day nine? Unreal. 
Michael Dyer's gain has been Nick Mannion's loss. Arm Sobian still hanging on in sixth place after surviving a scary all-in. Don't sleep on Rich Zoo. Oh, that's right. My man went out with Kings versus Kings versus Aces on the final table bubble. Joe Cata rewrites poker history. Do something once, and some will call it luck. An accident. Happenstance. Do it twice? Well, that's a different story. Luck turns to skill. Accident to purpose. Happenstance to plan. He's trying to better at a very premium hat. Tonight, Joe Cata continues his march towards a destination only four others have reached. Two-time main event champion. Joe Cata at that instant got a beautiful run out. Cata will raise and take it. Cata takes another pot. Joe Cata looking to become a two-time main event champion. Over nearly two weeks, 7,868 competitors have fallen placing Kata in the direct path of history. Five more must fall before he returns to the winner's circle for a second time. The youngest main event champ ever. Everyone's guaranteed a million. It kind of relieves a little pressure, right? From nearly 8,000 entrants down to just six, the dream is very real. Joe Cata looking to bring home the biscuits at his second main event title. Joe is the definition of unflappable. People have tried to flap him. He cannot be flapped. Supporters have remained boisterous throughout this final table and are amping up their cheers as the crowning moment nears, especially those of 32-year-old Tony Miles. In a tournament that often is called a marathon, it would be appropriate for Tony Miles to leave a champion. Johnson finished 11th two years ago. He's running well, playing well, and living well. Sin without a permanent home, so if he wins, he won't be able to bring the bracelet home, but I'm sure he'll manage it well in the Road. Former UT student Michael Dyer, the chip leader with over 160 million. Dyer had a cup of coffee as a Longhorn, but he's here at the main event to stay. His stack and style have impressed everyone. Hard to ignore the reality of that leaderboard. Michael Dyer and then everyone else. Dyer with 41% of the chips in play. 23-year-old Arm Zobi in the short stack. Fear not, young Arm. If you double four times, you'll have more chips than Dyer. Current payout for next out, a million eight. The blinds at a half million, one million, 150. 50K ante. Six-handed action. Always exciting, and when you put it at the final table of the World Series of Boker main event, you just amp that up. Kata with King Jack under the gun. As you mentioned, six players remain, all American, which means four of the last six champions will have been U.S. born. Greg Merson, Ryan Reese, Scott Blumstein, and fill in the blank. Fold it around to Arm Zobian. 8-6 of diamonds. His morning routine is breakfast, workout, read, and play video games. A little different from mine, which is wake up and go back to sleep. <laughs> all in. 23 year old puts it all out there looking for a fold from the big blind Michael Dyer. Dyer with an ace. Fold is doubtful. My call. And there is the call. Zobian shoved with only one player to get through, but Dyer is willing and able to take Zobian out. Yeah, Zobian only had the big blind behind him, so by pushing there, if Dyer doesn't have a hand, Zobian would increase his stack by 10% without having to see a flop. Zobian, as it is, is at risk with a live six. Last time Zobian was all in against Dyer, he had ace eight versus pocket sixes. An eight saved him on the river, but an eight won't save Zobian this time. All right, here's the flop, no six. Not the worst. Not the best. Nothing much there for Zobi, and he's going to need a six or running diamonds. That's that Dyer going for another knockout. It's the seven of hearts. One time, baby. One time. Arm Zobian's got to have a six. The river card is a 10. Zobian's Hail Mary falls short. He will go into the history books as our sixth place finisher. Okay, well blown. Okay, take it down. Good Ah, he was a kid with a dream. His first ever in the money main event finish worth a million eight hundred thousand. And Michael Dyer increases his chip lead. He has too many chips. 
Our youngest player is out. And Michael Dyer has too many chips. So now we're five-handed. Tony Miles and everyone else with a nice pay jump. Norman, you've expressed an affinity for Tony Miles over the course of this main event. He seems to be savoring every moment of this wild ride, and what a ride it's been. He started 10-handed play as the super short stack. To quote the great Norman Chad, Tony Miles will make the final six wearing a Russell Wilson Seahawks jersey. Uh, Norman, you really never said that. Okay, I'll say it now. Tony Miles will make the final six wearing a Russell Wilson Seahawks jersey. We're good now, are we not? Proceed. At a table full of diverse stories from Johnson's desire to roam without a home to Nick Mannion's remarkable first main event, Tony Miles stands out. After some early life struggles, he seems to have turned himself around and his positive outlook reflects in his poker game. His is a feel-good story of second chances, redemption, and the power of faith. Rooting for Tony Miles is pretty darn easy. Uh, you know, we really didn't talk anything about Joe Catta, right? He's got his already. Give someone else a chance for once. Jeez. Norman Chad, ladies and gentlemen. So Tony and the others guaranteed $2,150,000 right now after Zobian's exit in sixth place. Catta the short stack. Michael Dyer working with over 40% of the chips in play. People are just so good at it. Tony Miles has worn Russell Wilson and Steph Curry jerseys. Who will he wear if he makes the final three? Nick Mannion on the button. King 10 of clubs, a raise to 2.2 million for the man who led this final table when we began. Now the leader is Michael Dyer. Small blind, 10-6 of hearts, makes the call for 1.7 million more. Kata with Jack Nine off. The prospect of Kata winning a second title just boggles the mind. My, my mind is boggled, Lon. <laughs> Kata makes the call. Three-way flop. Seven, nine, ace. Dyer manages to pick up a gut shot. Middle pair is good for Kata. It is Mannion who is reaching for chips. Nick bets 2.6 million. Dyer tags along. Dyer's call seems suspect, but with 170 million chips, you're allowed to be suspect. Now Kata with the best hand. Well, this is where your live reads are so important. Manning was the pre-flop raiser. Does he have an ace? And what is Dyer calling with? Yeah, tough for Joe to continue with that ace out there. So Manning's king high, the hand to beat right now. Worst hand calls, best hand folds, and they call themselves professionals. Tray of clubs on the turn. Dyer going to fire at that turn card, 4,175, and Mannion going, why are you firing? I'm the one with the flush draw. Yeah, that's really odd. Dyer picked up no additional equity on the turn and decides to lead out. And actually, if that card's not a club, maybe Mannion mucks this easily. But he does indeed call to build a pot of almost 21 million. Queen of spades on the end. Yeah, what do you do now, Lone Star boy? Now he checks. If Mannion checks, he wins, but he probably doesn't think he has the best hand. That means some chips are going to go to work here. Eight and a half million. Michael Dyer folds. Dyer called the flop and led the turn. I do not have this move in my arsenal. We don't teach it at the Norman Chad School of Poker. Students are clamoring for it. We just don't have the right instructor. And after that hand, we will not be hiring Michael Dyer. Nick solidifying his second place standing, going through the chip leader for that pot. No more Penn and Teller theater for the final table, but the crowds are still boisterous. Initially, disappointment from Arm Zobian, but upon reflection, yeah, he's in a celebrating mood for his sixth place finish. Everybody's still here, a 30-something, man in the oldest at 35. Sometimes I'm just not good at folding, <laughs> is the moral of the story. Everyone folds a lot less, five-handed. Nick Mannion under the gun, still with 88 million chips, folds to the chip leader. Michael Dyer with 9-8, he raises the two million. Kata on the button with pocket fives. Joe says his main event strategy is play tight and find your spots to bluff here and there. We have seen him do just that. Joe is the short stack. Kata is all in. I'm guessing a lot of players would have just called on the button, 
for less than 10% of their stack, but Kata pushes with 26 bigs. To Miles, he hates the fold. He's got pocket sevens. Ooh, and Kata now in a heap of trouble if Miles comes on in. It would be for about 40% of Tony's chips. Dyer still to act. He was the initial raiser. Don't know how much that factors into Miles' decision. And if Kata just makes a normal re-raise, Tony might be in in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. And then Kata again in big trouble. But he does fold the sevens. And Dyer folds, and Kata's shove gets through. Joe Kata walks between the raindrops again. You have sevens, B, Joe? Maybe. I don't know what to do there with sevens. Getting the best hand to lay down. Joe Kata continues to prove he knows all the tricks of No Limit Hold'em. I'm just really like just thankful of the way the tournament has been playing out. And I guess everyone has that anxiety because you just don't know what's going to happen. There's so much unknowns in poker. You could go from small stack chip leader, chip leader out. So the anticipation of not knowing what's happening and everyone pulling for you, everyone rooting for you, and not letting anyone down, including yourself. So, I mean, there is a lot of anxiety um, in these last final days. He wears anxiety well, and I tell you, that smile goes a long way. Joe Cata now has 30 big blinds to play with, with the blinds at 500,000 and 1 million. Sin under the gun, fourth place of five, a raise to 2.2 million. John Sin has not folded Jack-10 since April 2013. Sin will be enjoying his first ever million dollar payday in a poker tournament. Folded to Kata in the big blind, king, queen of clubs. And Kata just calls for a million two more. Easy big blind defense here from the champ. Two season main event vets see a flop of Trey 6-5 rainbow king high for Kata still in charge. He checks. Sin's plan was to travel after the main event, whether he busted on day one or day seven. And at this point, I think he can scratch super eights and think about four seasons. <laughs> He does fire 2.4 million into that pot. That should be that. Or maybe not. 2.4 million was the total on your last four seasons bill. <laughs> Kata comes along. Well, most amateurs are done here after sin bets. Many pros take another card. I'll bet you can guess what I would have done. Oh, and the dealer exposes the king of spades, the next burn card. Not a happy sight for Kata. FYI, an exposed card nearly ended the French Revolution in 1789 before it started. It's a fascinating little-known story, and next time you're in L.A., Lon, I'll buy you dinner at fabulous Frankie's on Melrose and tell you the tale. Can I get dessert? No. So Joe Cata saw an out, the king exposed, but he does have a flush draw, and so he leads out for 5.1 million. Emboldened by that flush draw, allows him to semi-bluff here. Sorry, which king was it? What, what king? king of well, regardless of the burn card, a tray on the turn never changes anything, anytime, anywhere, on any hand. <laughs> Don't see Johnson continuing here with jack high and no draw. Oh, really? Sin doubling down on his flop bet, a raise to 10.5 million, or quadrupling, actually. Well, these gentlemen play at a different level. Mm. It's like they're playing chess and I'm playing checkers. You know, if Kata hadn't picked up the club draw, I don't know how he continues here. Just a premium move here from John Sin. But Joe Kata is not immediately convinced as his rail stands arm in arm. Well, there's 26 million in the middle now. Joe Kata doesn't want to leave it out there. Wow, Kata with a call. Fascinating hand, the river card, a black deuce, but a spade. Well, a tray on the turn doesn't change anything anytime. And of course, a deuce on the river hardly ever changes anything anytime. Who wants this pot more? Critical time for Joe Cata, the short stack here. All in. And Caddis is all in with a busted flush draw and king high and sin folds. 
Boy, oh boy, another bluff shove from Kata. He didn't know it, he had the best hand, but he just went right out there and seized the pot. A fascinating hand from Joe Kata and John Sin. Kata may not win this 2018 championship, but he's certainly doing everything in his power to take home another main event bracelet. Nice play, champ. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller ball seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. You don't always have to make your hand to win a pot in No Limit Hold'em. Joe Catta putting on a clinic as his stack climbs to nearly 50 million. Steely willed and ice veined, Joe Catta's got a strong heart. And Joe Catta no longer the short stack. John Sin wears that albatross now with 38 million. So much talk about how lucky Catta was in 09, but now folks like Phil Helmuth and Mike Matisseau Given him his due, the kid can play. Under the gun with tens, a raise to 2.2 million. Bowl the two, Tony Miles on the button. Ace king. Uh, two big hands, two pretty big stacks. Remember, Kata pushed earlier with pocket fives and Miles folded pocket sevens. In this spot, Miles likely to three bet with ace king. Miles has Joe out chipped by about 7 million. 6.9. There is the three bet, Norman. You go, Gary. Nick Mannion folds his small blind. Dyer his big back to Kata. Kata with 45 bigs behind. He is not folding here. It's just a question of calling or four betting. What to do, what to do. Still pocket tens, sir. We've seen Joe take this amount of time before. All in. And with this same result, and what a four bet it is. Yeah, I didn't anticipate the all in. That's a huge shove. So many things running through my mind. Insane. I can't imagine Miles giving up Ace King here. Just two hands crush him, aces and kings. But this is for almost all his chips. If Miles calls and loses, he'll have just six big blinds left. Another crucible moment for both of these players. I've been running pretty pure this tournament. Well, at this point, I think Kata would just like to take the pot down right here. Kata had been content to grind his stack, now going for a big chunk pre-flop. There is the call to put Joe Kata at risk. They're racing for all of Kata's chips and a huge piece of poker history. Nearly 100 million in the pot. Two main event lives essentially at risk. Kata ran real well with pocket pairs at the 09 final table. He came from behind with them there. Here, he has to have a pocket pair hold up. Both rails at full force. Kata's incredible main event run now on the line. Here is the flop. And boom, just like that, Kata in a deep hole as Miles pairs his king. Kata now on the edge of elimination. Turn card brings Kata more outs with a gut shot. Kata needs a jack or a 10, or his bid for a second main event title is over. The river card is a nine. Tony Miles with the knockout of Joe Kata. What a thrilling main event Joe Kata gave us. He created such a buzz around this main event. Yeah, 
Joe Cata took a big chance with a shove. Tony Miles took a big chance with the call. And Tony Miles shoots up the leaderboard with that massive pot. And now with the dust settled, Joe Cata will be our fifth place finisher. You can really sense the respect everyone has in this room for Joe Cata tonight. Michael, am I not supposed to take that long? I'm never folding a game. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll tell you what I was thinking later, but I didn't do it. Like, huh? I said, what's the difference, you know? What a remarkable accomplishment. Fifth place in 2018 after winning it all in 09 with a performance that will be hard to top. Well done, Joe Cata. The drama of that moment cannot be understated. Win the flip and have a hundred million and a great chance to get heads up. Lose it and either be out or have crumbs in fifth place. Joe lost, Tony won. We're four-handed for the bracelet. And Joe Cata's feet could not be overstated against massive fields, first in 09, fifth in 2018. That's on the short list of top main event accomplishments. What song is that? A song? Yeah. I'm going to oh, tell I'm you sorry, a really cool story. Oh, I'm, so, I'm not used to this. Sin under the gun, really the short really stack cool with pocket kings. Sounds good. A raise to 2.2 million. I want to hear the story. Yeah. If I were Sin, I would have folded kings when certain hands are running bad. The Norman Chad School of Poker recommends folding them pre-flop. It's the proper EV decision. Those were kings in the hands of the French guy, not the U.S. guy. It goes across borders. <laughs> after this, I'll tell you story. No problem. Tony calls. I guarantee you if Sin knocks out Miles in this hand, Tony is not going to tell him the story. I want the story now. Sin can't knock out Miles on this hand because Miles has more chips. I am tired of you nitpicking me to death with these details. What is Dyer doing? He's a big stack bully. There is a three bet with 10-7 off suit. The Norman Chess School of Poker does a free monthly seminar on wheels called Bad Time for Three Bets. On wheels? You mean you take a van around to different neighborhoods? Well, I'm on a bike. You don't attract a lot of people, do you? No. I'm all in. And Sin re-raises all in for over 39.3 million and gets everyone to fold a juicy pre-flop pot for Sin. You know, Michael Dyer didn't actually light a match because smoking isn't allowed in the Amazon room, but he just torched seven million plus chips. John Sin luckily canceled his subscription to the Norman Chad School of Poker before the main event, so he used his newfound knowledge to win the pot with Kings. A graduate of Indiana University, he turned to poker after the real world was just a little too real. His first job was as an analyst at a logistics firm. He got laid off after one year. Then he was an IT consultant. Really? There is no future in IT. <laughs> John Sen is still the short stack, but 44 big blinds now. I just have one word for you, John. Plastics. <laughs> Tony Miles under the gun, ace king again. Tony Miles was an insurance agent, briefly. He just couldn't close fast enough. <laughs> A raise to 2.2 million, touche. Pocket tens for Nick Mannion on the button. Mannion, former mail carrier, former poker dealer. One job was outdoors, one was indoors. Puts together a three bet with the pocket tens to seven million. Dyer and Sin fold their blinds back to Miles. He sniped Joe Cata's pocket tens with Ace King a moment ago. Ace King running well recently. The Norman Chat School of Poker says you have to play a hot hand to the river. You're starting to sound a lot like a Norman Chad School of Poker infomercial. Yeah. <laughs> Ace of hearts, king of spades, Tony. Ace of hearts, king of spades. These are two very healthy stacks out of position. I would just see a flop, particularly against an opponent wearing a watch on the opposite risk than you are. That's exactly what he does. 16 million in the middle. 
Oh, no ace, no king this time. Nick Mannion's pocket ten stand up so far, and Joe Cata somewhere probably yelling something we cannot repeat on ESPN. <laughs> Well, you know, I've, I've had pocket 10 79 times since the last main event, and I've never flopped all undercards. Uh, Mannion loves to see that. After the check, he bets eight and a half million. How many times can Ace King really work for you? Sometimes, you know, just give it up. Ace of hearts, king of spades. Ace of hearts, king of spades. Got no piece of that flop. Doesn't care. Does not care, you are right. And there is the call. He's going to go with it, take an ace king to the river. Turn card five of hearts. Tony now seeing the dark side of ace king, though he does pick up the nut flush draw. Yeah, he picks up some equity there. He could even check a raise with it now. Mannion with the only made hand. Miles still hoping. And he checks again. I hate the single finger tap on the arm check. That will be banned after I make one phone call this offseason. <laughs> Mannion checks back. River card now six of hearts. Miles gets bailed out with the ace high flush. Straight on the board now. But Miles with the goods. Tony, ace of hearts, king of spades. You don't even have to concern yourself with the king of spades anymore. <laughs> Boy, a couple of really bad runouts at this final table for Nick Mannion. Now Miles wondering how much can he get from Nick on this river with that juicy board out there. Ace of hearts, king of spades. Forget about the king of spades. 18 million. Oh, he's going for 18 million with Mannion playing the board. Now Mannion knows to get out of Dodge. Tony Miles doing it again. Michael Dyer may have the most chips, but this is not a one man race anymore. Miles nearing 115 million as the bracelet and main event title loom. From 7,874, there are just four who can take home $8.8 .8 million now. Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Joe Stapleton as we play down to three, then play down to a champion. By the way, this was the 13th straight year. The main event attracted at least 6,000 entrants. And unlike those deadbeat golfers on the PGA Tour, <laughs> these people had to pay to play. Nick Mannion and short stack John Sin trying to keep their heads above water as they wait for an opportunity to improve their lots. Sin under the gun. A raise to 2.1 million with Jack nine miles with a small pocket pair. Miles plays mostly cash games in Florida, actually playing a lot of Pot Limit Omaha lately. He also hosts a No Limit Hold'em game once a week at home. I can't get into that game, they're just looking for fish. <laughs> with the pocket trays, he just calls. Mannion with queen eight in the small blind folds to Dyer in the big blind. In Mannion's home game, if you defend the small blind, you better have a good reason to defend it. Okay, I made that up, but it might be true. <laughs> Tire will defend with four tray. Three of the four players will see this flop. And what a flop for Miles with a set of threes, and Dyer hit bottom two. Disaster flop for Michael Dyer. And how often have we said that? Never check, check to Miles. There is a poker maxim that says, bet bottom set or else Doyle Brunson will personally hunt you down. Okay, I made that up, but if you bet every bottom set you ever made, you're looking at a very positive EV. That is 4.39. million for Miles. I believe the song is put your head on my shoulder, <laughs> not put your head on your shoulder. It's just a question of how much Dyer's going to lose in this pot. Dyer flopping two pair. We've seen it happen so often, but this time he's up against a better hand. This time he is going to raise it to 14 million, 325 as John Sin gets out of the way quickly. Dyer steps into it. 
And I can't blame them. You flop bottom two pair and you almost always are way ahead. Miles might put Dyer on a draw. Dyer certainly capable of making this play with say five, six of spades. The 200 million plus stacks now heads up. Miles just with the call with a set of threes. Over 36 million in the middle. They'll go to the turn card. Five of clubs, Miles still ahead. And Dyer reaching again. This could be very bad for Dyer. 21.4 million. Game changing pot in progress. This reminds me of Mad Men season four, episode seven, The Suitcase. When Don Draper utters those immortal words, that's what the money is for. Tony likely just to call here and see if he can get Dyer to offer at it again on the river. Miles with that hand, seeing a much brighter future for him as we move forward at this final table. And as you mentioned, Norman, just a call here. Dyer's got to wonder why he is sticking around. River card is another king giving Miles a full house. And now Dyer does check. Dyer actually gets a break here. His fours and trays are counterfeited. Now he's just got kings and fours. Really a stinker of a hand, and it's going to save him some chips. It was once said, if you must break the law, do it to seize power. In all other cases, observe it. Come on, you just made that up. No, I didn't. Julius Caesar once said it. Okay, then how does it apply here? It doesn't. Who cares? <laughs> Twenty-seven million. Twenty-seven million. That is twenty-seven. Just over one third pot. And a quick call. Tony turns over the boat. He called that bet. That was a bizarre semi insta call. Dyer just dropped one third of his stack on that hand. And with that, Tony collects the monster pot to become the main event chip leader. I guess Dyer had Tony Miles on a missed draw. Lately, the Golden State Warriors are winning everything, and so too does Tony Miles. 132 million chip pot slides his way. Tony is the final table chip leader with four left. My, how that turned quickly. It's what they all came here for. That glorious main event bracelet, and of course, the matter of $8.8 million. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Joe Stapleton. We're down to our final four of the 2018 World Series of Poker main event. First timer Nick Mannion has been hanging on at this final table, but as Nick tells it, he wasn't even supposed to be here. I never even thought it was going to happen this way. I was basically booking my flight home fr last Friday morning because I thought I was going to be alive for 15, 20 minutes on day two with three, three, what was it, 30 big blinds or less? So I never thought I was going to make it this far. How is he here? He wasn't even coming to Las Vegas unless someone could take care of his dogs. Then he had to win a satellite to get into the main event. Then he lost 90% of his chips on day one. Nick with Queen Jack suited in the big blind. After Johnson open raise with Jack 10 suited. Here is the flop, deuce six, nine all undercards. Keeps Mannion ahead, but Sin likes it with a club draw. Mannion worked as a postal carrier a couple of years in Michigan in all types of weather. A big difference from working as a postal carrier in say LA. Those people deliver the mail on skateboards. Mannion with a bet of three million. I just can't see Sin as an IT consultant. He had to be the most personable IT consultant ever. But still, when you're an IT consultant, Lon, it's tough to get dates. <laughs> and he will call with his draw. Neither with a hand yet. Sin with the draw. Turn card, deuce of hearts. Mannion still with the best hand. 
Seems confident and aggressive, a bet of five and a half million. And Mannion keeps bluffing with the best hand. I think that's how JFK won the 1960 presidential election. Sin almost didn't play in the main event because he was under the weather a day or two beforehand. Of course, if he were a mail carrier, he would have had to play under any conditions because they have that postal creed. Oh, wait a minute. That has nothing to do with whether or not the mail carrier is sick. You know, you can stick your nitty details where the sun don't shine. With his flush draw and one live card, a call from John Sin. Ace of clubs on the end, and the club bubbles up from the river for John Sin's flush. Mannion began this final table as chip leader. Virtually nothing has gone his way. A bet to put Sin all in. An easy call, a winning flush for Sin, and a double up and extra life. Yeah, I tried. Bluff with the best hand, bluff with the best hand, and bluff with a loser for Nick Mannion. Sin takes over half of Mannion's stack. In the process, John switches spots on the leaderboard with Nick Mannion. Hard didn't work. That was sick. Hard did not win that I thought, hand. I thought you, I thought you had, like I thought you had it. Not obviously. I thought my flush was good, but. Like if I thought you were, if I thought you were just bluffing, I would have just jammed. But, right, yeah, yeah. And if I don't hit, then you just win yeah. all the money. That's sick. Or if a jack comes, you win all my money yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Watch the biggest live events in poker throughout the year, including the World Series of Poker, World Poker Tour, Super High Roller Bowl, and more exclusively on Poker Go. Subscribe today at PokerGo.com. Got some monster pay jumps staring our last four players square in the eyes. So many reasons to use every tool you have. Last time. Gorgeous main event bracelet sitting just off the final table. Mannion folds under the gun, dire king queen. Offsuit, a raise to 2.4 million. The blinds at 600,000, 1.2 million. Sin folds, miles now. Big blind, ace nine suited. Miles, of course, very fortunate to be here. He had to stop playing poker. He was in detox for a couple of months. He says, quite simply, I feel very blessed. Nine point six. He feels blessed to have ace nine suited, a three bet. Dyer no longer top dog. Miles with a slightly bigger stack, but Dyer still has a mountain of chips and a good hand in position. Both hovering around 150 million chips. And Dyer is going to make the call with his king queen. The two shorter stacks are just fine with seeing the big stacks clash here. Here is the flop. Miles with top pair, Dyer with middle pair. Antonio Esfandiari always tells us how hard it is to make a pair. Well, two people just made a pair. How hard is that, Antonio? I mean, the guy only tells us one thing and one thing only. What good is he anyway? <laughs> Tony with the ace continues for nine and a half million. Another bad flop for Dyer against Miles. He's in the process of losing more chips. Dyer puts his call together. He does have a knack for hitting two pair. <laughs> we have seen it time and time again. Turn card. And yeah, well, Dyer hit two pair, but that's a thing of beauty for Miles. Trip aces. Miles with a monster here. And he checks it. Check back from Dyer. 
River Card another seven, giving Miles another full house against Dyer. Well, that check on the turn and that double paired board really increases the chances that Miles can get paid off here on the river. 27 million. Wow, that's what he bet on the river just a moment ago to get Dyer to call. 27 million he bet, Lon. Uh, correction, Tony Miles in the process of betting 27 million. <laughs> He's putting the chips together at this very moment. There we go. The second big pot between these two, the second time Miles getting the best of Dyer. Last time Dyer quickly called Miles big river bet, apparently putting him on a missed draw. This time he's thinking long and hard. Michael Dyer with the aces and queens. He makes the call again and sees another full house from Tony Miles. Not too long ago, Dyer had nearly 200 million in chips. He's down to 100 million. And not too long ago, Tony Miles, when 10 handed was the short stack, he's got more than half the chips at play now, four handed. Yeah, he has changed the balance of this final table. Tony just one lavender chip away from becoming a 200 million chip man. A lot of weird things could happen, but one thing is for sure it's good to be Tony Miles about now. Tony Miles is the man to beat with four players left in the 2018 World Series of Poker main event. Michael Dyer and Nick Mannion, two stacks on the desperate end of the scale. Miles and John Sin have run so good, and they are now 1-2 in chips. Talk about good. Two black kings for Sin. And a raise to 3.8 million. 3.8. Tony always working with that stack. A little housekeeping. Now let's look at the cards. He'll fold. All in. Then Mannion all in, all in with ace-10. And a quick call from Sin. And Nick Mannion's main event mortality is staring him in the face. Good luck, Nick. Mannion down to 14 bigs. He has seen no run good at this final table. Johnson trying to get us to three-handed. Pocket Kings again for Sin. Mannion came here as the final table chip leader. Let's get a sweat on the flop. Let's get a sweat. What do you want on the flop? Let's try to get a sweat on the flop. Yeah. Nick's not looking for a sweat on the flop. He's looking to survive. Let's go like Queen Jack flop. Queen Jack eight. Queen Jack eight. All right. Queen Jack eight. Nick, just tell him ace, ace, ace. Nick Mannion at risk. No sweat, no help for Nick. I'll take an Acer Club. I'll take the Acer Club. You the Acer Clubs? Oh, I'll take a club. Yeah, let's put a club out there. Let's put a sweat out there. Deuce of diamonds on the turn. Mannion now will be facing perhaps his last river card of the main event. The first timer looking for one time here. He's gonna need an ace or his dreamlike main event will be over. Pay him the money. The river card. Another six, and Nick Mannion is out. John Sin with almost 129 million gets us to three handed. Mannion readies his backpack 
to hold over $2.8 million. They're discussing what they wear tomorrow so no one duplicates. One of them will be the next world champion. Well played by the first timer, Nick Mannion. A first timer at the main event won last year, Scott Blumstein. A first timer finishes fourth this year, Nick Mannion. He showed a lot of heart. Michael Dyer's chip lead is gone, but he's not sin with a stack to be wary of. But Tony Miles is the man to beat right now. Down to three, three players in their early 30s looking for life-changing money if they can be the last man standing. Tony Miles trying to turn his second chance into his first world title. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high rollerball seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. They came to be a world champion. And we have our class of 2018 World Series of Poker Final Nine in a most remarkable way. They came for the bracelet. They came for $8.8 million. But one by one, they accepted defeat. One by one, the World Series of Poker main event put their dreams on hold. The river card is a nine, and that will bring this main event to an end for Joe Cata. Except for three. Three competitors, three survivors, three 30-somethings with dreams unrealized on a poker odyssey that started 12 days ago. Tony Miles, John Sin, and Michael Dyer stand in line, waiting, waiting for $8.8 .8 million, waiting for the bracelet, waiting to be a world champion. Tonight at the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino, the 2018 World Series of Poker Main Event Champion will be crowned. Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Joe Stapleton ready to bring you all the action. Go John! Go John! Go, John! Go Team Miles! Yeah, day 10, baby. Norman, with your blessings, will proceed. I didn't know you could bless a poker room. In the blink of an eye, Tony Miles went from short stack to champ leader with three remaining. He also went from Russell Wilson to Steph Curry to Tim Tebow. I'm still digesting his jersey selections. Michael Dyer's attire has been consistent, though his stack has not. Like balloons, Michael's stack is deflating and rapidly. I am not happy about this development and will be speaking to someone about this. Who? Someone. John Sin has been rock solid throughout. He sits in second place. Sin is the perfect final table, is cool, calm, collected. Tonight, Sin City might be his with the right cards. Chip counts and eliminations. The big story, Joe Cata out in fifth. Joe's 0-9 win in 2018 fifth place finish certainly place him among the main event greats. A champion's path is never easy. And now this trio face the biggest moment of their poker careers after their minds and bodies have been heavily taxed. All main event, Norman has told us how much he loves Michael Dyer's balloons. And well, now you're holding balloons, aren't you? As a journalist, we were taught to be unbiased, no cheering in the press box, but I never saw a rule that addressed holding a few balloons while talking to the people at home. So here I am and here they are. Well, would this be a good time to talk about you and hot air? <laughs> uh, I will ignore that. Just like I will ignore John Sin and Tony Miles because tonight is Michael Dyer's time. While he has the balloon sweatshirt, the other two will float away one by one by one. That's, that's one too many. Whatever. The 32-year-old pro will bet, raise, raise, bet, check, raise, bluff, shove, all in. Michael Dyer loves every combination of aggression. I wonder if he likes passive aggression. <laughs> Great story, Norman. 
Well, there you see what it has all boiled down to. What a night for the fans. What a night for these three. What a night for poker. Three-handed play is a unique animal. Dyer, the short stack, now folds to Johnson. 10-8 of hearts. Johnson, born in 1984. Tony Miles, born in 1985. Michael Dyer, born in 1986. So the mid-1980s were good years for poker conception. Sin just calls. Not while we're in the hand. Blinds at 800,000, 1.6 million with a 200,000 ante. Appreciate that. And that's what did. When the main event got down to a 10-person single table, Miles was 10th in chips. Now he has more than half the chips in play, three-handed. Any ace at this stage is a good ace, a raise to six million for Miles. Sin had called with the worst hand. That is one of the most popular offerings at the Norman Chad School of Poker. An early test from the 32-year-old Miles. And John Sin will call, a raise and a call. We've got almost 13 million in the pot already. People talk about how much heart a poker player has. You need a bigger heart to play three-handed poker. Can't wait for premium hands. That don't work. Pair of threes for Miles, but Sin is favored with his flush draw and two over cards. He checks it. Other World Series bracelet events this year started after the main event. Miles, after playing seven hours on day two of this final table last night, went straight to the 10K six max final table to watch Sean Deeb win his second bracelet of the summer. And Deeb has been on Tony's rail as one of his coaches. Tony bets six million. John Sin, the most accomplished player among these final three. Oh wow, there is a check raise to 15 and a half million. Check raise, chicken rooster from John Sin. John wants more in the pot if that flush does come. Or he'll take a fold. Okay, Sin and Miles both re-peeking at their cards after the flop. Now, I can't remember anything, but I was born during the Eisenhower administration. How can these young minds forget their cards that quickly? So a test back at Tony Miles from John Sin. And there's a call from Miles for nine and a half million more. And Michael Dyer thinking, I like the big stacks bumping heads. Maybe I can squeeze into second or better. Sin gets there with that jack of hearts. John Sin, 33-year-old Los Angeles pro, currently with no fixed address as he moved out of his apartment, put all his stuff into storage, and plans to travel for a while. Almost 44 million chips in the middle. And Sin puts out a relatively small bet, 14.6 million. Yeah, but still, Miles not getting the right pot odds here since he cannot win the pot at showdown. <laughs> Miles with bottom pair on this wet board. And he does not oblige Sin this time. Johnson making a statement while dragging a nice pot to close the gap on the chip leader. John Sin showing us he's got some moves on the felt, but the way he describes it, this has been the main event of Run Good and Have Fun. I just play the best I can, and I've been running so good and so fortunate that I can't complain about anything that would happen at this point. And, and it's been a lot of fun, too. Uh, all my tables have been, you know, really social. A lot of people that, I, that have busted out have been telling, saying that they've had, you know, an amazing time. And I know if or when I bust out, uh, I won't have any bad feelings about it. Johnson, 9-8 of diamonds, the second biggest stack, just about 20 million behind Tony Miles. He limps in. Trying to limp call one more time. Maybe we can have him down to the Norman Chad School of Poker as a guest lecturer. Is there an actual physical location yet? No. So where will you tell him to go? One step at a time, Stretch. <laughs> Another raise from Miles with Queen Jack this time. That's a nice man who smiles when he's raised. John Sin seems to connect personally with everyone he plays with at a poker table. Trying to help a dealer out and you made yourself stretch. <laughs> this is like... That's a tell. 
It's like those bars with like the big games. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. They're like giant Jenga and. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you've been to Gold, Gold Spike downtown. Yeah, yeah, downtown. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. Flop is all spades. Top pair for Sin. Miles holds the only spade with his jack. Sin has checked it. Tony Miles, 32 years old, well-traveled, currently living in Ormond Beach, Florida. Miles bets 8.1 million. Bigger flop bet this time. Shoe now on the other foot, assuming they're wearing shoes. I noticed that Sin's jeans have a hole in them, so he might be barefoot. Heck, he lives nowhere. Sin with top pair. Commits 8.1 million. Turn card now. Six of hearts. Sin still good with top pair. Johnson has not had to contend with a scary turn card in the last 512 hands. I did the research and that turn card turns the percentages in his favor. This time I believe you. John Sin. 5.6 million, another bet that can hardly be ignored. Yeah, and this time, Miles getting the right pot odds to call Sin's tiny bet. Sin smiling, squeezing every ounce of enjoyment from this event, and he'll take that pot as well. Do we have a new chip leader, Lon? We do indeed. His name is John Sin. Before this main event, Sin was perhaps most famous for finishing 11th in 2016. The year before, none other than Daniel Negreanu finished 11th. Of course, back in the day, you couldn't even finish 11th. The 1972 main event, won by Amarillo Slim, had only eight entrants. And by the way, my first recorded cash, and you could look this up, March 10th, 2009, the $200 stud eight at the Bicycle Casino in LA, I finished 11th. Wow, good company. Tony Miles on the button with ace jack, a raise to four million. Dyer with ace 10 is all in and he's gonna hate what he sees. And there is the call to put Dyer at risk. My balloon man needs this. Ace jack, me, ace 10 him. Of course, we are playing Texas, no limit hold'em, but no one from Texas has won this title since Bill Smith in 1985. Dyer from Houston trying to end that drought. Miles trying to knock off the once invincible, once unbeatable Michael Dyer. Dyer dominated here, all in. It's a rainbow flop, no 10 for Michael Dyer. Dyer has shown very little emotion over 10 days of play. All we gotta do is fade it. I think we just turn Turn card, Miles pairs up, giving Dyer different outs with a Broadway draw. It gives him more outs, it's okay, that's not good. No, his next out, that's not good. Stop cheering. <laughs> if Sean Deeb says that's not good, it's not good. The straight draw now gives Dyer one more out than he had. Six of hearts out there, six of hearts. Dyer needs a king. Yeah, six of hearts. The river card. Another queen popping the balloons on Michael Dyer's main event. Dyer ruled this main event for a long stretch, and third place is an amazing achievement, but no doubt he'll have regrets. So we are now heads up as Michael Dyer walks off to collect the biggest poker payday of his life. Uh, can't really change the poker, it is what it is. No, you play great, man. Yeah. What's your name? John. Nice to meet you, I'm Tony. Tony, what card do you want? Three of clubs. I'm all in. You gotta have a sweat. You gotta make it fun. You gotta make it interesting. You gotta get nervous. And 
Then there were two, Tony Miles and John Sin, 30-somethings with nearly identical stacks, competing for one championship bracelet and $8.8 .8 million. Time to start talking about John Sin's achievement. We concentrated on Joe Cata winning in 09 and fifth this year. Mark Newhouse finished ninth in back-to-back -back years, 2013 and 14. Michael Ruan was fourth in 2016 and 10th in 2017. And now Sin 11th in 2016, first or second this year, all of it seems so unlikely. If you thought three-handed was different, welcome to the bizarro world of heads up. Sin with a raise to six million with nine four offsuit. Miles with seven six offsuit for the big blind makes the call. What's so incredible is Kata, Newhouse, Ruan, Sin, all with two extraordinarily deep runs in fields of 6,000 or more. Yikes, Sin comes up big with trip fours. What a glorious sight to behold for him. Miles checks it to him. Sin said he was running well. No sign of that slowing down. Sin expected to continue, but at this moment he likes the check. A nine gives Sin a full house that's totally disguised, and Miles, the drawing dead with an open-ended straight draw. Sin said he was running well. No sign of that slowing down. And a really good check back from Sin on the flop. A perfect card for Miles to bet, and as you mentioned, he's drawn dead. And Miles does lead out here, eight million, and John Sin now sees a chance to put some distance between himself and Tony. John rechecks his cards way too often. Can you see him playing PLO? He'd have to write down the cards <laughs> on a notepad. John just calls and thinks, okay, this is good. River card. Five of clubs, how cruel can this game be? Miles Rivers, a nine high straight with no chance of winning. Yeah, nothing worse than drawn dead and getting there. I've done that a couple of times in my life. First and second marriages? Good for you. Good for you. Tony Miles has to feel he's got the best hand here. And he bets like it's 17 million. Sin ran well to make a full house and ran well for Miles to hit his straight. We call that double running well. <laughs> Tony in his mind, hoping he gets a call. John Sin has something else in mind, however. Here is a raise to 38 and a half million. Yeah, what a sinking feeling it is to hit your card on the river, lead out and get raised. Well, Tony knows what beats him, but could John have one of those hands? Yeah, it's a head scratcher for Miles. Worst possible run out. Tony wondering if John would raise with just a four or with a bluff, or does he have a full house? Tony Miles with a big test, oh, and he course. fails that test with the call. Sin wins the pot, and from nearly identical stacks, John with a hundred million chip lead. Brilliantly played from his opening raise, brilliantly lucky right down to the river card. That's how you turn 9-4 off into gold. Tony looks ready to meditate, but they play on. Tony Miles being here with this opportunity is remarkable. A recovering alcohol and drug addict had to stop playing poker, was in detox for two months. He says, I've been to the depths of the lows, and this is the highest of the highs. You saw the look on John's face when that monster pot was pushed to him. He understands the zero-sum nature of poker, but his gentle nature still seems to struggle with his big victories. A raise for Miles. I wanted to fold. Million. What's that? I wanted to fold. Six million. Yeah. Um, should have. My hand was like pretty strong though. No refunds for wanting to fold. Sin, suited connectors, oh. makes the call. Miles grew up as an athlete, struggled in the clutch, and says this is a perfect opportunity for redemption on so many levels. Miles misses this flop. Sin picks up flush and straight draws and is favored, though Tony's queen high is best right now. Miles puts out eight yellow chips, eight million. Seems like Sin flops a big hand or a big draw every hand. Poker is easier when you do that. Poker is never easier for you. 
you just call the cards and the bets and we won't have a problem, okay? <laughs> Johnson with another check raise. And I think Tony Miles is a little weary of this action already. Indeed he is, he gives way to Sin. Early results are in, John Sin has taken control of this heads up match. Now his experience with the beneficial deal of cards has given him a two to one chip lead right now in this final battle to decide the championship of the World Series of Poker main event. Two weeks ago, that bracelet could have been worn by any one of the 7,874 players. Now, just two have that chance. John Sin and Tony Miles heads up at the World Series of Poker main event final table. Sin with a better than two to one chip lead. John Sin raised it up to five million with six four off suit. Miles comes along with seven five off suit. Here's our flop. Trey Ford, Jackson with middle pair, Miles a gut shot. Tony checks it. Sin keeps out flopping Miles to get to this final table. Sin said he had the seven luckiest days of his life. About a four and a half million with his pair of fours. Miles with the gut shot, plus he knows if he pairs his seven or five, that might give him the best hand. Well, as you alluded to, he's not going anywhere. He makes the call. Almost 20 million in the middle. Turn card, another tray keeps John Sin in the lead. Miles staring at the board, trying to change that tray into a six. He checks again. Sin comfortable that he is ahead here. Wants to keep firing. This time he bets six and a half million. Tony with a bit of that deer in the headlights look to him right now. Nothing going his way. Wow. Reaching for a stack of yellow. Those are worth a million each. A check raise. That is one serious check raise. Chicken rooster with seven high. Remind me again why check raise is chicken rooster? Because first you two chicken the bet, then cockle doodle do and raise. <laughs> Tony couldn't get anything going, so he is manufacturing his own momentum here. Boy, most players just give up on the turn. Miles sees a path to win it. You'd have to seek professional training to add this move to your repertoire. Yeah, but John Sin says this does not add up, and he makes a call for 13 and a half million more. King of Diamonds on the end. Sin is best, even if it is the fours and threes on board, but those diamonds and overcards out there, what's the love? You know, when your seven high check raise is called on the turn and you miss your draw on the river, you have only two options, charge ahead or concede. All in. Charge all ahead, in. says Tony Miles, all, all in. in. Wow, Miles steals a page from Joe Cata's playbook and bluff shoves. He's pushing with nearly 50 bigs left in his stack. On poker's biggest stage, I love it. What is happening? Why did I not just check the turn? Miles has picked a nifty spot for the bluff shove. Sin with a very marginal hand. But if John calls, it's all over, baby. Sin also knows if he folds, he still has the chip lead. What are you doing? Scary board, but what did Miles check raise the turn with that he could shove the river with? These are the questions that neither you, Lon, nor I can answer. John with a snicker might be thinking this would be a sick way to win the main event title. All right, I think if you're, if you're, if you're sick enough to pull this bluff off, I think I just have to let you have it. I don't have a very good hand at all. I'm just, I'm just confused. I can beat like straight draws. Sin has the right idea. If his heart can follow his head, he'll win the main event title right here. Uh, I'm about to call the clock on myself. I mean, I, I just, I don't think I'm calling.
Sin does fall. That's nice Anthony. That's nice good one. What a moment for Tony Miles. If he ends up winning the title, that hand will stay with both of them for the rest of their lives. He was backed into a corner and found a way out. Early heads up action was not happening for Tony Miles, so he needed to conjure up his own magic to get himself in the hunt. That decision could change everything. All in. Why did I not just check the turn? If you're sick enough to pull this bluff up, I think I just have to let you have it. That's it, Tony. Seven high, no problem for Tony Miles as he shrinks his chip deficit. Main event is special to that Florida resident, Tony Miles, because it did give him his unofficial start in poker. This is my third time playing. The first time I played the main events, what me got, got me started in poker, I won $150 satellite. And so I came out here, I was super pumped. I was studying online and uh, I got out here, I got kings versus aces like super early in the tournament, busted out, I was super disappointed, but that made me go home and I was hungry to learn about the game. And I think that's actually what inspired me and motivated me to get better and improve. So each year I've gotten better and better and this year I just feel like I'm playing lights out and I'm really happy. Tony literally did play lights out on day five. The Rio lost power during a massive lightning storm and play ended about an hour early. So Tony Miles and John Sin with pretty even stacks here. Heads up, Miles with ace, queen, offsuit. A raise to 7.2 million. John Sin with jack, deuce, offsuit. Miles born in Utah, Sin born in Illinois. Seven of the first eight main event champions were Texans. In the first 11 main events, Texans finished first or second. Michael Dyer, of course, third this year. John Sin calls bottom pair and the lead for John Sin, who checks it to the preflop aggressor. It's hard to make a pair in this game. Miles will continue as they do with ace high, a bet of nine million, just over half the pot. I wonder if obstetricians tell expecting parents of twins that it'll be hard to make a pair. <laughs> John Sin comes along with the smallest pair. 33 million in the middle already. Turn card is another king. Sin checks again. With that board, Miles might think ace high is good here. Yellow chips again, worth one million a piece. And he's putting together uh, that is almost a full stack, 19 million, again over half the pot. By the way, I was talking to Johnson, and he says he played Omaha with me once or twice years ago at Hollywood Park in L.A. I do not remember him. Then again, I can't recall every donkey who walks in that I grind into pieces. Oh. oh. I <laughs> uh, was just a kid, and hold him, kid. He had no <laughs> idea what he was doing, and I have little idea what I'm doing, but I was ahead of him. <laughs> Johnson saying to himself, why, 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 19 million? And again, a nice read from Sin. Well, the pot swells, and maybe Miles not so sure his ace high is good here. Oh, and now Tony has something to bet, pairing that queen on the river, sending all of John Sin's great reads to this point into the dumpster. Yeah, Miles gets lucky, and now he's going to try to figure out the proper amount to get a call here. Sin checked to him a third time. There's got to be a more efficient way to assemble a bet. This is like watching my grandfather try to tie a necktie. Uh, educated guess, I'd imagine your grandfather is probably dead. Well, well, then it's even more difficult for him. Miles now slides out 28 million, well under half the pot. Well, as you mentioned, Sin's reads were true. He did everything right. Then the river did him wrong. There were no realistic draws on the flop. Backdoor clubs did not get there. The straight did get there if Miles bet Jack-10 all the way, which seems unlikely. John really wants to know what Tony's up to. I think he needs to know. It's like a pantomime rail. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> 
Johnson, chips in hand. Pays him off. Sin knew Tony had it before he saw Tony's cards. Big pot. Tony Miles now approaching 250 million chips. A great pot taken from John Sin. Sin folded when he should have called earlier to end this thing, then calls here when he should fold. It's never a cinch. I believe Cheryl Crow once sang, no one said it would be easy, but no one said it would be this hard. Tony Miles stacking the winnings. Bottom pair was good on the turn, but the river brings a queen for Tony Miles, and Sin just couldn't get away. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Let's look back at the final table eliminations that got us heads up. Antoine Labat out in ninth. We pull out of the Paris Climate Accord and they ding us for a million. Artem Metaliti gone in eighth. Maybe my least favorite scarf ever. Aussie Alex Linsky earned 1.5 million for seven. I hope he went to his room and not Lake Mead. The youngest final table is Arm Zobian out in six. North Providence's finest. Ah, he was a kid with a dream. The 09 champ Joe Cata impressively bowed out in fifth. A kid with another dream. What a run for Cata. First timer Nick Mannion returns to Michigan with 2.8 million. I hope he doesn't have any 10 year old mail in that backpack from his postal route. The most recent elimination Michael Dyer out in third. He was aggressive and maybe over. Progressed. All right, on the button, Johnson raised it up with pocket fives to 7.2 million. Tony Miles now has the action with nine six. Since the moneymaker era began 15 years ago, we have not had a main event champion over the age of 40. Eventually, we will. Miles called for almost five million more. And yikes, Sin with a set of fives. Miles with top pair. And Miles checks it. When Sin finished 11th in 2016, he was rooming here with his friend Lance Keating, who coached Sin in poker when they lived in Indiana. And Keating finished 32nd at that 2016 main event. With his set, Sin comes out firing eight and a half million. Tony Miles flopping top pair, heads up, and he's nearly dead in the water. But he likes it, and Sin likes what he sees as Miles makes the call. Oh, sweet hand. The jack is a blank for Miles, and blank are his chances at winning at showdown. He checks again. When Sin finished 11th in 2016, he was knocked out by eventual runner-up Gordon Veo. John shoved with Queen-10, Gordon had Ace-King, and that was that. John Sin now 19 million, almost 60% of the pot. That's a pretty good board for Miles' nines. He doesn't seem to look at Sin that often, probably because John has no physical tells to speak of. For instance, you know, I've been watching Sin. He appears to blink at the average rate for your average 33-year-old. <laughs> and there is a call of 19 million, 70 million in the middle. John Sin can't be beat. Another three fives full now for Sin. Miles checks again. Sin's got the full house, and depending on the size of Sin's bet. Wait, 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 wait. You're not going to talk bet sizing, are you? Please don't talk bet sizing. All I was going to say is, depending on the size of the bet, Miles probably has reason to call. Plus, I was going to add that you absolutely disgust me. <laughs> John Sin now with two thirds of the pot with his bet 46 and a half million. I will defer comment on the sizing of that bet until I publish my monthly bet sizing blog in a couple of weeks, available through Amazon Prime. It's a good bet. If it were sized correctly. He's ramped it up on every street. That's sick. Tony looking a little weary at this stage of the game. This is a big one. 
Miles will relinquish the chip lead to Sin if he calls here. Well, we see where John got his poker face. What would Tim Tebow do? Another critical decision under stress required. Full house. Again. Tony seems gutted that he was had there. They go back and forth, and John Sin takes charge again. How much is it? A sagging Tony Miles hoping to take some energy from his rail. He is really going to need to rally now. 46.5. John Sin, again the leader, heads up. You can watch the biggest live events in poker throughout the year, including the World Series of Poker, World Poker Tour, Super High Roller Bowl, and more exclusively on Poker Go. Subscribe today at PokerGo.com. Back in a moment. During our breaks, the players return to their rails for some in-game coaching and review. Sometimes a friend can see something you don't see at the table. Jungle Man, what'd you say on break, Jungle Man? Dan Jungleman Cates among the pros on the rail. Ah, to be heads up, have aces with a chip lead and 8.8 .8 million bucks within reach. And with the aces, Sin raises to 9 million. 10 8 suited for Miles, he comes along. Miles with the Michael Strahan, the suited one gapper. The flop. Miles with some hope with a straight draw. Sin's pocket aces, though, are good. I mentioned earlier that other World Series events began after the main event this year, and they produced some incredible stuff. Phil Helmuth won his 15th bracelet. That's the all-time record, of course. And Joe Cata, after busting this final table, went out and played the final event of the series. The closer won his second bracelet of the summer and fourth overall. What a summer at the World Series Joe Cata had. Nine million from Sin with his aces. Same as his pre-flop raise. And uh, seems to be a very slow insta-call from Tony Miles here with a gut <laughs> shot and backdoor flush draw. You did say slow insta-call, right? Yes. <laughs> I thought so. Turn card is the nine, and Miles with the straight on the turn, cracking Sin's aces. Bingo. And he checks again. Sin now senses danger, checks back. Another nine on the end. And now it's time for Tony to go to work. A uh, two-fisted bet does not bode well for John Sin. Here it comes, 36 million. Come, please. It's a lot. Just shy of a pot-sized bet. I don't think I can fold. When he has said that previously, Sin has not folded. Uh, th sorry, 36, right? Yeah. All right, it's fine. You don't have to comment as long as it's 36. Miles straight is very hidden. Uh, Impossible for Sin to get away. I can't fold. I can't fold. Let's go. Let's go. A big pot for Tony, infusing him with chips oh. and renewed energy. Miles cracks aces and does a drum roll. How do you get away from aces? Nice hand. You counted it? I trust you. Tony catches a nine, and it's a nice hand. I catch a nine, and I'm a donkey for chasing. Such is life. <laughs> Fall seven times, get up eight. Fall seven times, get up eight. Tony bringing his own life lessons to the felt. Let's go. Let's just turn this place into a club. Can we get some music? Yeah. John Sin still with the lead. A much slimmer oh. advantage now after being unable Sorry. to fold his aces to Tony Strait. Sin, King Jack suited. Three. 
He says, let's play for nine million. Nine million. Queen eight off Tony Miles. As we approach 200 hands, this is now the longest heads up in main event history. In 2016, Kui Win and Gordon Veo went 182 hands. Wow. Tony Miles with aggression and then some feeling frisky with his new one wealth, a three bet to 34 million. Some late night pep to his step. By the way, if Sin wins this thing, his 11th and first in a three year span, that would compare very strongly to Joe Cata's first and fifth over a 10 year main event period. Sin with his own suited one gapper will make the call. Tony not loving that. Tony had only two World Series caches before this one, totaling $6,400. This one will be either $5 million or $8.8 .8 million. <laughs> His queen eight against Sen's King Jack suited. Big pot already. And boom, boom, trip kings is John Sen's reward for that pre-flop call. Yeah, and after his three bet, Miles' reward is whiffing the flop. John Sin sitting pretty. Will Tony continue his charade? It looks like he will, Norman. Yeah, but first there'll be a uh, chip dance, and then he'll make a C bet. At the worst possible time, Tony Miles with a C bet equaling 32 million. Sin sitting on a monster. He doesn't want to scare the fish off the hook. By the way, another reason they are moving slowly, they are tired. Yeah. <laughs> I think they've almost worn out their rails. John Sin with his Godzilla trip kings. Just calls. Look at the pot size, 133 million. Turn card, Miles now pairs his eight, but is drawing dead. That's a shame. Come on. Wow, another bluff shove. It's his only hope of winning this pot, but not his only choice. And this time, I don't think Johnson is folding. Mm, I think if he just had me beat, it's just really gross. But I don't think I can fold. I don't think I can fold. I don't think he can fold. Once again, as with Miles' other bluff shove, if Sin calls, he's Sin world Sin champion. Yo, yeah, we're first draw. 113. 100. I promise I am not slow rolling you. I just really don't know. It's late. <clears throat> and it's a big decision. I don't have Ace King. I don't have King Queen. Miles now knows for certain he's beat. But I, but I did call it King Jack pre-flop. And I'm wondering if it was a mistake. I can't fold. John's dad about to get the thrill of a lifetime. At a different hour in a different event, this would have been a pretty quick call. Sin finally does make the call that he had to make. And that makes John Sin our 2018 World Series of Poker main event champion. I'm sorry, man. I wasn't trying to say anything. Hey, slow rolling me. Huh? Stupid. John Sin has brought the main event title home, wherever that may be. Tony Miles quite dismayed right now. John Sin stunned by what has now come to him. $5 million as runner-up for the main event, going to Tony Miles.
Ladies and gentlemen, winning $5 million. Let's have a nice round of applause for Mr. Tony Miles. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time winning the 2018 World Series of Poker main event, your champion, Mr. John Sen. His performance was enlightening, entertaining, confident, and masterful. Welcome to Sin City. Finally, a smile from our new world champion. Quite a moment there as John Sin embraces his father. A look now at the final main event results. John Sin winning 8.8 .8 million miles with five million, a fantastic end to a fantastic main event. John Sin, a smile on his face, full of grace. Congratulations, sir. Down to Joe Stapleton with our newest champion. Your life has just changed forever. You're world champion. Are you ready? I, I don't even know what to say. It was amazing, not just today, but I had people following me since day one. The support is amazing, it's unreal. Congratulations to the 2018 World Series of Poker main event champion. For Joe Stapleton and Norman Chet, I'm Lon McCarran. Good night from the main event of the 2018 World Series of Poker. Well done, John Sen.